Hey everyone, Phil from 3DP UK Tech Channel. Today I am going to be doing an upgrade on this K1 here, um, and that is using the Creativity K1 Extruder Upgrade Kit, which I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video. Uh, I think you can pick this up for about £35, and what that will do is update the extruder of this K1, and I believe you can use it for the K1C and the K1 Max, which is just over there. Um, so we'll go through the contents of the box and then we'll go for a detailed explanation on how to change that over. Okay, so this is the K1 Extruder Upgrade Kit by Creativity. Like I said, I'm going to leave a link in the description. This is the new upgrade K1 for the K1 series and it's a metal extruder. So it's going to be more durable, stronger for extrusion. So on the, on the um, current original uh, Creality K1, you have this latch system, which is fine, it's not an issue, but there seems to be a bit of an issue around the um, durability of that. So when the filament's going through, you find it's not actually gripping the filament, so you get quite a lot of slippage. Now on this current uh, Creality K1 extruder, there's no way to actually tension that, uh, to bring the gears closer together to actually allow for you to make any changes to that. So what we want to do is use this kit. So let's have a quick look inside. So it comes in quite a sturdy little box. And uh, as you can see, this is the actual extruder itself. Let's pop that out. Um, just put this box to one side, like so. so it's kind of going to sit in this, so this is the gears inside. It's going to fit in this orientation in the actual um, head itself. And the filament's going to go in through here. Okay, so in the box you have this tensioner as well. And that's kind of going to be the key part component of this extruder. And then you've got loads of little spares. There's nothing else left in there. There's also no instructions, so it's kind of going to be a nice simple fix. They give you the tools to carry out the job, but I've always got plenty of those and a little spring. So the idea is, let's just take the spring out. We can fit that in first. So you've got, um, so it's going to be, like I said, in this orientation. So the motor going in from the back and this is facing the front of the filling head, as you can see here. Um, so what you want to do is put this spring on like so fits over and you want to make sure that you do that from the beginning and then you fit this through so the actual so if you're trying to fit this in the actual spring so using this to tighten it, it's not going to work so it's just going to keep slipping so what you want to do is get your allen key so let's just get the one that we need Obviously I'm just showing you for demonstration purposes because we actually, before we put the um, handle and the spring on, you want to make sure that it's connected up to the actual motor because inside here, if we just open that up, you've got like uh, a part where we actually need to connect it to the um, extruder motor. Um, so if you've already put this on, it's not going to allow you to do that. But the concept is you have this, the spring and the washer, and that just creates that complete unit. Now you need your Allen key because this is actually going to connect up to the extruder itself and then once you've done that you can then tension which is kind of the idea is to tension this so you can change the um, the grip on the filament which is an improvement of this. You'll notice on the original it's got the latch we don't have the latch so you're going to be using this to feed the filament through. For me it's so much better. You do have the automatic filament loader, but this is just going to push in so quicker. And not knowing which way the latch is all the time is it's a real pain. So let's just, um, we'll go through disassembling the old one and we'll go through the assembly of the new one. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is remove the back um, cover, which is on the, it's basically covering the motor of the extruder and that just protects it. I don't think we're going to end up using that at the end of the video um, from what I can see it probably won't fit but anyone who removes that there's two little knob jewels you just need to lift it up and pop it off it's easy as that 
Okay, so the next thing we need to do is remove the Bowden tube and the clip. So basically what we want to do is undo the blue clip that's holding the Bowden tube in place. Um, and then what we need to do is heat up the, um, the printing head um, to about 230 degrees and then just click on um, retract. So there's a little setting on the screen on the K1. Um, you can either extrude or extract. Just make sure we do that and we'll do the extract. And then you just undo the latch on there and pull it out. And that's what you end up with. Um, I'm going to snip this because we are going to use this filament just to prime um, the new extruder. So in this part of the video, we're going to actually remove the extruder motor and the extruder itself. And how we do that is we undo the three screws. So um, there's one on the left hand side if you were looking from the front and two on the right. So we're going to undo that now with an Allen key. Um, we do need to keep those bolts. I do believe they supply them in the pack. But to be honest with you, there's no point in um, putting any new ones on. Just keep them as spares. We're just going to put this to one side. Um, I tend to put them on the actual printing bed uh, um, just below, just that way they don't get mixed up with any other screws or bolts that you've got. Okay, so now that we've removed those three bolts, um, this will actually allow us to now remove the whole of the extruder head, and that's including the motor. And quite simply, just lift it up uh, to, to an angle, so towards the back, and it'll just pop out. Remember, it is connected with wiring. You might find some debris, just pull that away. Um, just to double check. Okay, so what we now want to do is remove the two bolts that um, the extruder and the motor are connected with. And once again, we um, are likely to use those bolts. Um, but I do believe actually that there's a different setup with this. So we'll keep them to one side and just make sure that whatever it is that we need to do, if we need to use those bolts, we can. The one thing that is important that we do need to keep is this um, insert in between, so this um, cover, because um, it didn't get supplied within the new extruder. So this is the internals of the old extruder that was supplied with the original K1. We, and this is with the latch as well. So as you can see, um, it's just basically there's no way to tighten it up. So with the new one, it's pretty identical. The holes for the bolts are in the same place. So I believe we might need to use smaller bolts for that. So we are going to use the new set that comes with it. This is the insert. We're going to put that to the side. The other thing that you will notice is there's a um, PTFE blue tube that um, basically links the bottom of the extruder to the printing head. You don't want to lose that. Once again, wasn't surprised so, um, with the actual unit. Um, just check that there's no blockages while it's in place. So now what we want to do is connect up the new extruder to the extruder motor. But before we do that, make sure the insert is on there. So just place it up. It's very easy. It doesn't matter which way it goes. And there's no failure on that one because the holes are in exactly the same place. Okay, so now we're going to connect up the new extruder. You will notice on the left hand side, there's a longer bolt. And on the right hand side, it's shorter bolt. Um, make sure that the PTFE push in point is at the top. Um, and then what we want to do is tighten up each side evenly just to make sure that we don't um, the cogs align. Um, so we're tightening up the right hand side. So that's the one with the shorter bolt um, and it's behind the latch. And then the other one is slightly um, longer because of the fact that it's got to go a bit further. And then what we want to do is then add on the um, tensioner. So that's the next step. Um, so what we want to do now is feed some filament through just to make sure that the cogs are aligned and that there's no grinding. This is a perfect opportunity before setting it up onto the actual printing head just to double check everything that you've done. Um, and that way it doesn't do any sort of permanent damage. So as you can see, the two new bolts, um, like I said earlier, um, one is um, a longer bolt and then there's the shorter bolt. Um, you want to make sure that they're in the right order. So the shorter one is there and the longer on the left. And they're all supplied in the box. So now what we want to do is put the tensioner on. Um, and how you do that is just push it through. Uh, make sure that you have the PTFE. Uh, just make sure that that's on, on the actual side of the extruder. So holding it gently with one hand, we're going to now 
get the Allen key just to connect it up. And then what we're going to do is run the PTFE through, uh, sorry, the uh, filament through and just make sure that it's moving through. So once we're printing, we can actually adjust that. So if you find that there's any slippages and stuff like that, this extruder will help with that. The old extruder that was supplied on the original K1, now you couldn't make any changes with the tension on that. It was either flow rate and that was it. So with this, you can actually make changes. So with the cog, you can feed it through. Um, it seems as if it's all feeding through. Um, the actual tension of it is going to be difficult to know until you're actually um, flowing through the heated nozzle. So we can do a check on that a bit later. Okay, so what we want to now do is put this motor and the extruder back in place. Remembering that there's a blue PTFE um, pipe at the bottom, so you want to make sure that you work out exactly where that fits. It will fit in at an angle and then just pops down and you'll feel it click into place. Then what we want to do is grab those three bolts that we left on the bed. Um, it's one on the left facing the front and two on the right if you're facing the front like I am. So let's reconnect them now. Um, if you're struggling for space, just move the head over. Like I say, the actual printer is disconnected and you should always make sure that you disconnect from the power when you're working on the motor or anything like that. It's just to prevent damage to the printer and uh, risks to yourself. So always just double check that. So we tightened up this side and then we'll do the other side. Um, there's two on this side, so we'll tighten those up. Like I said earlier on in the video, the black uh, plastic cover that was on the original motor head, um, we're not going to be able to use this. So I tried to um, just once I tightened it up, I tried to actually put the cover on just to see whether we could have that in place because I do prefer to have things like that covered over. But um, the actual extruder, the new extruder doesn't allow for that to fit. It kind of blocks those um, little plugs. So. We're not going to need that, but always keep it, keep it to one side. You never know if you want to go back to the original. So using the settings on the screen, um, put extrude on and then we're going to feed it through. So as you can see, it's feeding through nice. We will change the tension on the actual, um, as we're flowing, as you can see, there's a, a bit of a misflow there, but we can adjust that once it starts printing. And you can do that while it's actually moving. You can have the machine slowed right down. So what we want to do is just pop the blue clip on to hold the Bowden tube in place. And that is pretty much it. That is everything set up. So like I said earlier, um, make sure you don't lose the PTFE liner in between the motor. And just looking over it now, um, it fits exactly how it was supposed to fit, but with the added bonus of being able to change the tension of the filament um, extruder. So once again, you can't use the, the cover that was in there, but you can see that the layout um, will allow us to print so much better. And if you have had any issues with extrusion, this is gonna really help with that. Once again, this is the um, Creativity Extruder Kit for the K1, the K1C and the K1 Max. And in the description of this video, you will be able to find the link to purchase that. And at time of this video is around £35. As you can see, it comes with everything in the kit, apart from the motor, it's just the extruder itself. And then the original K1 motor, you can just, uh, the extruder, you can just put it to one side. If, it, if it's in good use, just keep it. A quick word from today's video sponsor, PCB Way. PCB Way are a PCB board manufacturer, but not only do they do PCB boards, they also do FPC rigid flex, advanced PCB boards, CNC and 3D printing, and even SMD stencils. It's a really easy to use website. You can basically select the service you want and it'll give you a quote and they even do worldwide delivery. On that website, you also want to check out for some competitions and little programs that they run, and they even have special uh, kits that you can buy as well. So that's pcbway.com, today's video sponsor. Okay, so now that we've made changes to the extruder and we've added that onto the actual printing head, I'm going to run a quick print, which is going to be the Benchy. It's kind of the benchmark to make sure that your printer is working correctly. So we're probably going to need to just change the tension on this 
Um, and what I'm going to do is slow the printer down just so that I can actually do that and then just make adjustments. If there is any issues, you'd probably hear clicking and that will be the slipping of the um, filament itself. But as you can see, it looks like it's pretty much laying down exactly how I'm expecting it. Last time I used this, I did have some under extrusion um, and I wasn't quite sure whether it was the filament and whether the filament was damp, but I did actually dry that for four or five hours in a filament dryer and I still seem to have the same issues. And there seemed to be um, a lot of dragging as well. So what we're going to do is just let this run and then we'll come back and have a quick look at it. Okay, so this is the model I printed um, yesterday with the older extruder that was on there. And as you can see, it was really under extruding. Um, like I said, I wasn't 100% sure if it was something to do with the filament, but looking at this print now, um, I use this dual color just to give a really good impression and it really looks great. I mean, um, I did adjust it while it was flowing and you can see from some of the print, it's looking really great. There's nothing missing. And then what I'm going to do is show underneath. Now, this would be the area that would reveal if it was under extruding or over extruding because you'd get a misprint or you would you would see loads of gaps. But it just feels like um, this improvement has really made a big difference. So um, this whole review, you know, I will come back with for further information on it if I feel that it needs any more updates and I'll share that. So this was the Creativity K1 Extruder Upgrade upgrade Kit and you can use this on the K1, the K1 Max and the K1C if you want to. Like I said, I'll leave a link in the description. You can purchase this. So thank you for watching this video. Um, I'm Phil from 3DP UK Tech Channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks again to Creativity for sending me the extruder and for PCB Wade for sponsoring today's video. Check out some of my other videos for the Creality K1E that's coming and the K1 Max that's been recently posted. So take care everyone, Phil from 3DP UK Tech Channel.